Hello, welcome to OLT 321 European Literature. My name is Warren Reed. This is Lecture 7 on Emma Bovary's Romantic Quest. I'm not sure if you can hear it in the background, but you know, despite my best efforts, there's always somebody with a stereo trying to impede the work of education, broadening minds. Someone's always got to blast some noise. That's why I've been hiding out here in the country, in the, in the bushes to get away from that, and, and it's following me, so I'm sorry. I got to move on. Mandeleo will not wait for anybody. So here we go. We're gonna talk about the background to Emma's romantic outlook. We're gonna talk about the failure of Emma's marriage. We're gonna discuss the external causes of her tragedy, examine the tragic flaw in her character, and also consider the redemptive features of her quest. First, the background to Emma's romantic outlook has three factors. Number one, life in the country is boring to her. <sighs> she wants excitement and adventure, parties, and going to the theater. A city life. Yes. So she's longing for something she doesn't have. Okay, that's a problem. Okay, part factor two, education in the convent. Okay, she had an education in the convent, you know, Catholic sisters trying to keep her down, you know, they're trying to put down her emotional and sexual desires and she rebels against this passion, you know. You can either cave in or you can fight back and, and her spirit is the kind of fighting back. So she fills her gap imaginatively with romantic novels, the novels in the genre of the romance, okay? There's heroes and heroines, danger, rescue, and a very false representation, representation of love. Okay, and this is what, what leads her astray. She's dreaming of some kind of passion and love which actually, you know, doesn't really exist in the real world. And even when she feels it, it doesn't last very long. So like the drug addict or the drunkard, she, she's got to have more and more and more to get her, you know, get her mojo going. I can't believe I said mojo in a lecture. Okay, the last factor is, uh, she's, is her middle class or petty bourgeois background. In this level of society girls get educated but they're not allowed to work or do things you know they're just supposed to sit around and wait to get married or be married off to somebody so she's idle you know idle hands are the devil's playthings, and she daydreams from you know with ideas from her novels about passion and excitement okay next we're going to talk about the failures of emma's marriage this is real really just quite simple first she's married off to charles she doesn't love him he's not in love with her He's a simple guy, but he's also grateful he got this kind of cute wife. Yes! And he doesn't imagine that she could be unhappy. So his lack of imagination. Also, his medical training makes him think that her problems are physiological when, in fact, they're psychological. She finds him boring and without ambition. You know, she dreams of an exciting life, but her, her husband wants nothing more than to do his work and come home and, you know, maybe sit by the fire and scratch all evening. He's a professional failure in her eyes, and so this is also an embarrassment. You know, she dreamed, you know, at least he could be like a big doctor. You know? I mean, he's just kind of a, a failure, especially he does a surgery that goes wrong and the patient dies. Finally, I would say there's a lack of understanding and a lack of love from both of them. Now we talk about the external causes of her tragedy. First of all, French society is one cause by limiting the opportunities for women, especially women of her class, her status. Second, we've already mentioned, it's her background and her education. As noted, it's worsened by the false portrayal of love and life in those romantic novels. And lastly, it's her lovers, Léon and Rodolphe. Both men take advantage of her, and they have no guilty conscience. They are young bourgeois men just out to have a good time and they don't consider the consequences in her life of what they are doing. They use her until they are done or, as with Léon, until he, he finds a job where you know, having affairs could kind of look bad on him. So. This is another example, this is another criticism of the calculating bourgeois mentality which Flaubert is making in the novel. Next, we're going to talk about the tragic flaw in Emma's character. Okay, first of all, she's selfish. You can see that. She only thinks of herself, her own happiness. She doesn't think about Charles. She ignores her daughter. That's pretty much criminal in my view. She mistreats the maid and her mother-in-law. 
and she's only looking for her own satisfaction to satisfy her own desires. So selfish. Able. This leads to her tragic flaw. Too much passion. One main factor of romanticism is the importance pl placed on following your passion. Inspiration and passion are highest in romanticism, especially the romantic poets. And Emma is passionate, and in her rebellion against the external factors oppressing her, she overdoes it. She, she goes too far, and eventually it leads to her suicide. The last topic is the redemptive features of Emma's quest. Now the author of the course material says that she's to be admired for risking everything for her passion. Uh, what do you think? This is a very interesting question. As a human being, she deserves to love and to be loved, isn't it? We all deserve that. But unfortunately, she's put in a situation where it's not of her choosing and where she can't find love or happiness. Okay, we also know that she's got other influences make giving her an unrealistic expectation so that's a problem this is also part of you know the criticism in the novel so happiness and love are they worth fighting for they are right but then what about her daughter what about doing the best with what you have what if she hadn't read those novels what if she had been born into a poor family eh? so here we see realism at work showing the results of certain forces on a character change them and you change the story, you change the character. Could she have made other choices given her situation? Think about that, possibly. Anyway, it's a very interesting subject. And this brings us to the end of Lecture 7, our third lecture on uh, Gustave Flaubert's Madame Bovary. I know you're all disappointed. Don't worry, you can read the novel, you can go on Moodle, uh, you, can read, you can listen to the audio lecture. Get ready, because up next is Lecture 8. We're going to talk about the great Russian novelist, Dostoevsky. Yes!